Of course, we continue the conversation on what we learned earlier today from Mike Schilt that Xander Bogarts is moving from short to second, and Hassan Kim is moving back to shortstop from second base. It is great to have our Padres insider back with us here in 2024. Yes. Kevin AC in Peoria. Kevin, first of all, how was your offseason, and thanks for hopping on. I'm gonna go with my standard answer. My off season was fine. I'm ready for the. I'm ready for 2024 Padres. Let's go. You know the the off seasons for you. I mean, it's only February. They're not that long. Now they weren't in the postseason last year, so you add some time in October. Man, and it's not like nothing happened this off season either. Nothing's right? happened. Yeah. I mean, it's not like Juan well, Soto. A lot of waiting that you didn't get to. Like you, you didn't get to truly be away for a long time because right. you're like, okay. You make some calls, you sit around, you're waiting. And and so that, look, I ain't going to complain. It was nice. Hmm. Uh, and then, of course, you know, when you are basically gone for eight months, uh, you, someone at home thinks that you can be, your entire four months at home can be filled with chores. I'm not naming <laughs> any names. I'm yeah. just saying that might happen to me. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So that's funny. That's very funny. Kevin Ace is back with us here as we get you ready for Padres baseball in 2024. Uh, this is obviously a significant story. Uh, you heard from Mike Schild and Xander Bogarts today. In general, what's the overall thinking here? The Padres making this decision. It was going to come at some point. Why does now make the most sense? I'm thinking that one reason it makes the most sense now is this pitching staff that they have, right? Like every out is going to be precious, right? I mean, a lot of times. Like I still haven't figured out how they're going to reach their 1,400 innings uh, th this year. I know they will because every team does, right? But uh, <laughs> uh, in terms of them reaching it effectively and being a contending team, there's a lot of questions about that. And I just think that, I mean, they think uh, Ha-Sung Kim is so much better his range, his, his dependability. I mean, he is just a fantastic defender. And, uh, you know, I don't think there was really a question this was going to happen. It was just weird how it kind of like no one would really say it was gonna, hey, we're going to check with Xander. We're going to keep talking to him. And then boom, <laughs> this morning, you know, which I guess makes sense that spring training just started. Sure. But uh, like, like, like Xander even said, um, that you know it's not like he's been taking ground balls there or anything i mean this is this is it this is the start of it yeah it's uh, literally a whole new world for xander bogart's yeah. playing at second base now you wrote in your article today kevin that some thought within the organization the padres would be best served with jake cronenworth at second base and bogart's at first uh, i did hear xander when he talked about you know maybe moving again and it seemed like this is this is his only move he's going to make was there any try for from the organization to get him to potentially move to first base, or was that like a no go from the jump? I, he he said at the la end of last year, like as cool as he was being, even from then, you know, like hey, you know, yeah, I know, probably gonna have to move sometime. Don't really want to move now, but you know, second base, but not first. Uh, now that doesn't mean first never, though. They got to you know down the road, got to be thinking maybe Manny moves to first, right? Like mm -hmm. they got both these guys signed for the next. 50 years so yeah. you know, both these guys are gonna you know somebody's gonna be a dh first baseman but like xander bogarts was not ready like emphatic so i don't think that if it was even thought of that it got off the ground at all kevin ac is our padres insider he is in peoria spring training is underway so y you don't make this move and then move hasan kim right i mean what does this mean for hasan kim in 2024 and beyond you know look I really do believe they were listening on Ha Sung Kim, but not trying to move him, right? Like that was before Soto was traded. And after that, the imperative to move salary, you know, lessened quite a bit. So Jake Cornerworth and Ha Sung Kim were going to be here unless someone blew him away. And who are they going to blow him away for? It was going to be Ha Sung Kim. And I suppose it could still happen. But like their, their plan is to go forward with Ha Sung Kim. You're absolutely correct. And that, you know, in terms of like, look, Xander just was in camp today. So, but why they waited? Could, could there have been some questions up until, you know, the last couple of days, I suppose. Um, but yeah, they're not. Uh, Hassan Kim is a valuable, and I would dare say, and you guys, you know, maybe should spend a whole show debating this. I would dare say he's the most popular Padre. Like he doesn't have any baggage like the other two most popular Padres do. Um, it's like this guy's loved. And you know what? Where do they open the season again? 
Now, I'm yeah. not saying that that would keep them from trading him or any of that would keep him from trading him. But man, given the move, given how good he is uh, at on defense and his improvement every year on offense, and then these other sort of external factors, um, no, I don't see him going anywhere. Yeah, no, I, I, we we yep. agree with you. Every, everything on social media, people calling the show, text line, everywhere we go, and I'm sure you see it as well. I mean, Hassan Kim is beloved by this team for just how he plays, his hustle, and just, you know, overall, just the type of guy that he is. Um, Kevin, was the organization relieved that Xander, you know, said that he was going to do this? Because it felt like there was, you know, this caution of okay we want to talk to you about this but you know mm-hmm. we, we, we we're, we're kind of hoping that you you don't you know say that you don't want to do it how relieved are they that xander said okay i'll move to second base yeah uh, for sure it made things a lot easier i think that mike Schultz came back from aruba and and that that aj preller and his conversations on the phone that they felt good about it because xander's a good guy and a team guy but you know Again, like even today, he was he's a shortstop in his mind. This is a move he's making because it's the best thing. Um, and I do think that he sold that. I don't think it was just words because he was very honest about believing that he's a shortstop. Yeah. So I, I do believe he was sincere. But like, you know, I think he's still convincing himself <laughs> that, he, that he's over there. So, yeah, this made things a lot easier. But I think there was a fair amount of, of confidence, and a lot of that is, is about uh, Xander Bogarts. But they're very fortunate that Xander Bogarts, the you know 11-year veteran who's making all that money, is you know made it so easy on them. Yeah, no doubt. Kevin Aces are Padres insider. He's with, with us right now on John and Jim. Kevin, how do you see it right now, uh, the start of camp? What is this team's biggest need, and how do you think they plan to address it? Oh, well, obviously outfield. I mean, you could, I, I want to say like, you know, starting pitching because mm-hmm. I'm thinking contending team. And this is just so rare for a contending team to have this many questions about how you're going to fill in. Mm-hmm. So that I want to say, but then, you know, they do have pitchers. And they don't have outfielders. Right. right. <laughs> so, so that's where I'm going with outfielders. Now, look, they do. They, they've got a bunch of guys who have a little tiny bit of experience, you know, outside of obviously uh, Fernando Tatis Jr. And then Jordan Profar has more than a little bit of tiny experience. But you know what? I think the reality with Jordan Profar is um, he was – this is rare. A lot of times the whole intangibles can be made a lot of. I think that's why Jordan Profar was, uh, was signed. And when I say I think, I know. Uh, yeah. he may end up being their opening day starter in left field. The guy played winter ball. He can hit the ground running. He's a ball player. Um, he does make things happen, but look, he's lost uh, a step, right? Like this isn't the guy he was even a couple of years ago. And I, I think that he could be a placeholder for, you know, maybe a Jacob Marcy, maybe a, a you know, a Jackson Merrill. Um, so like, I think he was brought in because, He's the guy who gets in Manny's face. He's the guy who gets in Tatis' face. He's the guy they feed off of a lot. He, you know, he's their their friend, but he's also kind of a badass, and and he he's really good for this team. And so um, he has a lot of experience, but I don't see him as like a big solution for them. So they've got like questions: Who's your center fielder? I think that I mean that that's huge. Also. <laughs> the bottom of the lineup and so you're talking about the outfielders like what are they gonna get they need to get more from the bottom of the lineup i still say they'll be you know okay if they get more from the top of the lineup than they did last year but they need more from the bottom of the lineup but you can't get around this this starting pitching guys i mean ah, the bullpen is a shaky thing to build your staff on just because the nature of bullpens right yep and so they need at least one more starter yeah, and I, I I think the bullpen could be a strength for this team, but if they're overused Huge. because yeah. they don't have enough starters, then that's going to be definitely a problem there for sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, going back to the outfield, Kevin, a uh, name that you mentioned, Jackson Merrill, we talked a lot about him. He's a guy that um, has you know t- played zero in the outfield at all in his minor league career, yet he's now at spring training taking you know fly balls in center and left. Is this something they want to do with Jackson Merrill, or is this something that they're just doing because they don't have a position for Jackson Merrill right now? You know, it's another one that as soon as Bogarts was uh, signed, you go, 
okay, well, where's this guy going to play? Is it, you know, are they going to trade Kim and is it going to be second? Um, will Bogart be second? Jack Camaro will be shortstop. I mean, he's pretty good at shortstop. I mean, his bad is really the thing. So it's like, you know, I think right away you're like, this guy could be in left, um, maybe center. Um, and, and that long term like that. And he, he did play five games, uh, uh, start five games in double yep, A. Right. So, but you're right. That's about zero. Um, so, yeah, I, I think it's both. It, it was kind of like, well, let's see. Let's not get ahead of ourselves, right? So we, let's not talk about it so much right now or really even move the guy there for more than, say, five games in August and September. But, yeah, much like the Bogarts move, at some point you're like, if you want Jackson Merrill to play for you, he's going to be in the outfield at least, you know, a little bit. And you know what they'll see? They'll see if he's the kind of guy that can handle – because I think if he's on this roster that – he could see some time in the infield as well. Yeah, potentially for sure. Yep. And we talked about, okay, we all expect him to at least make one more move here, probably for an outfielder, but say they believe in Jackson Merrill from the jump. What if he has a bad spring, Kevin, where do they go from there? Well, then he's, yeah, then that's why you're going to make a move. Yeah. Yeah. Look, um, like I mean, AJ Peller talked about the other day. I thought it was a really, uh, you know, AJ <laughs> doesn't offer many good points in public. Uh, he's much better in private, but yeah. um, he, he publicly, you know, he's talking about how like, look, remember Paddock, remember Tatis, when we've moved these guys up, they have deserved it. It's not like, oh, Jackson Merrill, he's going to be our left fielder or, oh man, you know what? As long as he's sort of good enough, if Jackson Merrill's on this team, it's because he kicked ass in spring. That, you know, and that's probably the same for, for almost anybody else. I guess they could do no moves and have to force people on the roster, but that is by no means the, the plan. If Jackson Merrill is on the team, it's because he bulldozed his way onto the team, even more than, say, Tatish did, right? I mean, you yeah. remember back to the beginning of that spring, it was like, oh, uh, it was reluctance. Like, mm-hmm. oh, no, we got to give Tatish a little more time. And then he just, he gave him no choice. He's right. on the team. Um, Jackson Merrill, they're, they're talking about him possibly being on the team, but like, you know, they, they've got other, op- they will have other options in their favor right now is this free agent market is like molasses, yeah. mm-hmm. both in the pitching. And of course, there's not a whole lot of outfielders available, but like, um, you know, there's not really a hurry there. I guess the hurry for the Padres is they start eight and a half days uh, earlier than anyone else. Right. Kevin, final one for me uh, involves uh, Eric Etzenda. Is there, you know, it's been such a, um, I guess, blank canvas a little bit for Padres fans. You know, we we would hear from Peter Seidler. Uh, obviously, his relationship with the fan base was incredible. People were so passionate. He was so passionate about the team. And I think, you know, the fan base really responded well to him. With Eric Atsenda, I mean, we've made the comment before. I think there's like one headshot online. He could literally be in the studio with me. I wouldn't know it is him. What is yeah. he going to be forward facing? Will he speak to the media? Will he speak private? privately with the media what what, what is Eric Atsenda's role here and are we expecting to hear from him yeah he'll talk tomorrow and okay that probably be it I've talked to him he does not want to be quoted and he does he's very proud of that one headshot very proud wow. of that one headshot he's a private man huh. he's a very nice man it, it, it takes you about 20 seconds to realize why he and Peter hit it off um and and you know uh, I do believe he grew up a baseball fan and all that, but he has no, he won't be the, he won't be the uh, control person for more than a season. Um, and he doesn't have any interest in being what Peter was. I think we've talked about it before. I believe Padres fans have been spoiled. Like I get, at least when I say that, I base that, I get emails. Why is the Peter talking? Or right. this? this is obviously back. And I'm like, do you realize Peter Seidler talks like five times as much as any owner in the NFL hmm. or, or in the, uh, well, I should say, yeah, the NFL, sure. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, any major sports team, except yeah. Jerry Jones, basically. Yeah. Um, I mean, that, that was who Peter was. And you know what? Ron Fowler talked a lot too. And, but think back before that, when's the last time you were hearing from John Moore? Hmm. Um, yeah. You know, uh, so uh, no, we will not hear much from him, but there is a the Padres, a state of the Padres, so to speak. Uh, tomorrow, Eric Gruppner and Eric Katsenda will speak tomorrow. Has the process for the next control person already begun? 
Well, sure, but the standard answer is that, you know, Shield, Seidler, the Seidler family, the brothers, the trust, I mean, like, the family needs to figure this out and decide where they're going to go long term. And since Eric Kassenda had become more involved in the last, what, like three years, really, um, since Peter took over, um, that he's the best person right now to guide them through this, especially as they're trying to sort of, I've called this like a transition year, right? Like they're moving to like this, uh, the, they're not the free spending Padres anymore, but they're trying to figure out how to be a middle spending team that, that contends every year. And so, um, I think it's a group nerd could send a, a combo that they feel is best right now. Great reporting, Kevin. Um, enjoy your time in Peoria over the upcoming weeks, and we'll catch up with you again next week. We're getting closer. Obviously, spring training games in less than a week, and then Korea, that series in Seoul, will kick off in about a month between the Padres and the Dodgers. Kevin Ac, our Padres insider. Thank you, Kevin. Have a good weekend. Great to talk to you again, guys. Great, great to talk to you. Thanks, Kevin. Great to talk to you. That's All right, Eric news. said, I don't know if that had been. Was that out there previously? I Maybe some media not, members knew I mean, that because uh, they're there. I'm sure media members knew that. Let yeah. Me, let me check to see if there was any emails today. Because usually right. they send out like a list. But right. they send out a list towards the end of the day. Yep. Um, so far, I don't I don't see anything. Yeah, I don't, I don't see anything. Yeah, I mean, is it significant? I do think it is. We, we need to hear from them. And it doesn't have to be all year, but we do need to hear from them. That's how public relations works. You do need to hear from the person. You need to be assured that someone is responsive to your questions. I don't know if he's going to get into the weeds on why they're moving guys from short to second, no. but we need to hear about the TV deal and the future, where they are with the CBT, where they are financially. I mean, there's questions that need to be answered, and I'm glad to hear that we're going to hear from Eric at Senda tomorrow. And Kevin, if you listen back to that, um, it was straightforward. He will not be the point person and chairman of this team after this year, or at least for multiple seasons, like for more than a season and a half or two years. Like that's kind of, kind of how I viewed it as like, as soon as the, uh, you know, the passing of Peter Seiler happened as unfortunate as, as it was, you know, you kind of need someone to just hold like the lot, like to, to, to man the ships just for a little bit sure. while they get all their ducks in order. I agree. And Eric Kutsenda has been with Peter for a long time. So, Hey, Eric, we just need you to be in charge for a little while while we figure this all out. It is interesting that he has spoken to him in private and he has specifically mentioned the fact that he's proud of having one headshot on the Internet. I mean, that means you're a private man. Mm -hmm. If you've got one headshot on the Internet and I'm not talking about social media, but usually people in a corporate structure work for companies or headshots online. They get updated. You've, I mean, he's can't wait to see what he looks like. I know because I don't know. Is he going to look anything like that headshot that could have been from 2007? Does that make you feel better though, for the future of this franchise, knowing that Eric could will not be in five years. I think the same position he is now. I'll tell you after I hear from him, I might be enamored by what he says okay. tomorrow and say, keep this guy in charge. Or we might be like, okay, this well, makes sense. I mean, you look what's happened this off season. I don't think if Peter were still here, the same things would have happened. And going forward, is Eric Katsenda going to be more of a guy that keeps this team in line as far as money goes? Well, definitely in 2024. The answer is yes. Yeah. The answer is yes. But if he was, even if he sounded great tomorrow, John, and he's more of a guy that's, hey, here's the books. Right. We got to keep to abide have by to him. keep it in here. Yep. We're not going to take any risks. Then I don't want I I don't know if I'd want that as the owner of the Padres. True, but what he's doing is a little bit what like Manfred is doing for the other owners. He's representing ownership. Like Eric Senna doesn't own the team. No, I know he's representing he's the Seidler family. Correct. He's so the chairman. I'm I'm guessing place. I'm guessing he has a directive. The oh. reason they're spending what they're spending is not because Eric put his foot down. He might be part of the Dude, conversation. Eric could, or not Eric Senna. Uh, Eric Gruppner was on a radio show and he said. It was by design that Eric Cassenda is not front facing like Peter was and talking to the no, media and like, right. But I think design. it's but I think it's by design they're spending not because of Cassenda but because of the organization's directive. Like I don't think Cassenda is setting spending. Oh no no I you know I, what I, I mean I know but also I'm just saying like um and we heard from Kevin there which is also interesting. Don't quote me. I don't want to be quoted. I'm very proud that yeah. I am as private as I am, that nobody knows who I am. Um, 
Well, he's going to be quoted tomorrow a lot. Yeah. And there's going to be video and there's going to be pictures and everything he says is going to be analyzed. And I know it's a Saturday and I know it's a long weekend, but what he says will end up on social again, media immediately. Again, by design. Why do you think they did, why do you think they did it on a Saturday and not a Monday? 